Hello viewers, this is Dr. Salman Zafar with another video on the nomenclature of organic molecules and today we are going to discuss the nomenclature of ketones. So let's jump on to it. Ketones are organic molecules with a carbonyl functional group that has alkyl groups attached on both sides of the carbonyl group. This is how a general ketone looks like. So you have this carbon oxygen double bond, which we call the carbonyl functional group, and it has alkyl groups attached on both sides. Now, these alkyl groups could be similar uh, groups having same number of carbon atoms, or they may have different number of carbon atoms. So let's discuss the IUPAC rules for naming ketones. So the first rule is to select the longest possible chain that has the ketone functional group because in ketones this carbonyl functional group is the parent functional group so you have to keep in mind that you select that chain which has this ketone functional group and then of course you have to give numbers to the carbon atoms in that longest chain with the ketone functional group so you uh, number the carbon atoms in that chain according to the position of the ketone so you have to uh, keep in mind that you give the lowest possible locant or position to the ketone functional group and then to name the molecule you have to mention the position of this carbonyl functional group and you have to replace the last e of the corresponding alkane by O N E. So you already know that alkanes, the names of these alkanes end with E. So you have to remove this E and replace it with O N E. So that will form an alkanon. Let's see an example. We have this carbon chain having one, two, three, four, five carbon atoms and a carbonyl functional group. And this carbonyl functional group in this case is a ketone because it has a CH3 group on one side and a propyl group on the other side. The next rule, uh, because this has only one chain, so we don't have to select any chain. It has only one carbon chain having five carbon atoms. The next rule is to number the carbon atoms. And for that, you have to uh, see from where this ketone functional group gets the lowest position. So from the left hand side, you see it is at carbon number two and from the right hand side it is at carbon number four this carbonyl carbon gets position four from the right hand side and two from the left hand side so you have to number this chain from the left hand side so as to give lowest position to this carbonyl carbon and then to name the molecule you have to mention the position of this carbonyl functional group and then replace the last E of the corresponding alkane by O-N-E. So this is a five carbon chain. The corresponding alkane is pentane. So you have to replace the last E of pentane with O-N-E. And before that, you have to mention the position of the carbonyl function group as well. So the name becomes two. Two is the position of the carbonyl function group. And then pentanone and you can see here the last e of this pentone pentane is replaced by o n e you can also write the name as pentane without e and then you mention the position of the carbon and function group that is two and then you write o n e you end the name with o n e remember that you have to put hyphens between the position and the names whether that is the name of the chain or the, uh, the, the substituent. So you have to uh, separate them with a hyphen. If there is no uh, position between like uh, this uh, alkane name and the O-N-E, then you don't need a hyphen here. You can put a hyphen here between the position and the parent name in this case. If there are substituents present on the main chain, then you have to identify the number and types of all the substituents present on this chain. And you have to mention them before the parent name while you write the IUPAC name for a particular molecule. 
Now you can have molecules in which this carbonyl group uh, gets the same position from both sides. So in a chain, this carbonyl group, if it is present right in the center and it has the same position from both sides and the chain is substituted. So then you have to keep in mind that the substituent gets the lowest possible position while numbering the carbon chain. First, you have to see the position of the carbonyl group. If that can decide the direction of the numbering, if it cannot decide, then look for the position of the substituents. So you start numbering from that side from where the substituents are the closest. So an example, uh, as an example, we have this molecule. So it has uh, two possible chains. Let's see which one is the longest. So this chain here has one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven carbon atoms. And it also has this ketone functional group. So that you have to remember, don't miss out on this ketone functional group. Then we have another chain, uh, which starts from here, one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is not the longest chain. The longest possible chain that has this carbonyl functional group is a chain with seven carbon atoms. So it's a heptane with this ketone functional group. So it becomes heptanone. Now you have to number the carbon chain. And for that, you have to uh, see from where this ketone functional group uh, is closest. So if you start from here, uh, this ketone functional group falls at carbon number four, one, two, three, four. And if you start from the right hand side, it comes at one, two, three, and four. So from both sides, this ketone functional group falls at position four, but this chain is substituted. So now you have to see from where the substituent is the closest. So from this end, the substituent is at five, and from this end, it is at three. So now you have to number this carbon chain according to the position of the substituent so as to give lowest possible position to this methyl substituent. So you start numbering from here, one, two, three. This methyl substituent comes at three and ketone is at four. So while writing the name, first you have to mention the name of the name and position of the substituent and then you name the parent chain. So this is 3-methyl heptane without E and at position 4 there is this ketone function group so we write 4 on or you can write it in this form 3-methyl first you write the position and name of the substituent and then 4 heptanone. Again the last E is replaced by O and E. So you can have more than one substituent and uh, if the position of the carbon and function group is same from both sides, then you uh, see from where the substituents are the closest. Now these ketone molecules uh, may have double or triple bonds in the chain. So you have to mention the positions of the double and the triple bonds in the chain as well, along with the position of the ketone function group. Again, while numbering the carbon chain, first you have to see from where this carbonyl group is the closest. But if the position of the carbonyl group is the same from both ends, then you number the chain so as to give lowest possible position to the double or triple bonds. Now substituents in this case have lower priority. So you, when you have a double or a triple bond in the chain, then you don't see the position of the substituent while uh, deciding the direction of the numbering of the carbon chain, but you see from where this double or triple bond will be the closest. So first you check the carbonyl group. If it is the same from both ends, then you check the double or triple bonds. If the double or triple bonds are also uh, the same from both ends, then you go for the position of the substituent. So this is the priority order while numbering the carbon chain. So we have, as an example, this molecule. It has one chain, one, two, three, four, five carbon chain. It has a ketone functional group and a double bond as well. So to number the carbon chain, first you have to see the position of the ketone functional group. So from left hand side, it is at two. From right, it is at four. So now you don't have to bother about the position of the double bond because the numbering, the direction of the numbering uh, can be decided from the position of the uh, ketone function group. 
it is closest from this end so you start numbering from here ketone is at 2 and then double bond is at 3 right so it's an alkene alkenone it's not an alkanone it's an alkenone and because it has five carbon atoms it's a pentenone so you replace the last e of pentene with o n e and the final name would be 3 pentene 3 is the position of the double bond in this case and you see the last e has been removed and then you mention the position of the ketone functional group that is at carbon number 2 from left hand side and then you end the name with o n e you can also write the name uh, in this form pent and then you position the uh, mention the position of the double bond 3 e n is for alkene again no e is there and then finally you mention the position and the name of the ketone so you can uh, use any of these two forms both are recognized by IUPAC now we have another example again we have one two three four five carbon atoms in the chain to number the carbon atoms in the chain first you have to see the position of the ketone it is at three from both ends uh, if the position of the ketone is, functional group is the same from both ends then you see from where this double bond is the closest so from right hand side it is at carbon number four and from left hand side it is at carbon number one so you start numbering from here and then you move in this direction where ketone is at three so the final name would be one pentene in this case because double bond is at one again no e here the ketone is at three and you end the name with o n e or you can write it in this form pent one in without e three on Remember when these uh, double or triple bonds, when they are not the parent functional groups, then you don't write E at the end. If they are the parent functional group, as in case of alkene, the double bond is the parent functional group, so the name ends with E and E. And if alkyne is the parent functional group, then the name ends with Y and E. But if they are not the parent functional group, as in this case, ketone has the higher priority, then you don't write E. Uh, with en or yn right so this you have to remember now we have an example which has a double bond a ketone and a hydroxyl group as a substituent remember alcohol is another functional group but in the priority order it lies below ketone so now this hydroxyl group uh, acts as a substituent here so you have to take it as a substituent not as the uh, parent functional group the parent functional group in this case is ketone so let's see from where we can number the carbon chain so first you have to uh, see from where this ketone function group is the closest so from the left hand side it is at four and from the right again it is at four the next higher priority group in this molecule is the double bond right you don't have to see the position of the OH here it's mere a substituent here so first you have to see the, from where this double bond lies uh, the, at the closest uh, possible position so from left hand side it is at 2 and from here it is at 5 so you start numbering from here so double bond is at 2 ketone is at 4 and hydroxyl group is at 5 so while naming the molecule first you have to mention the position and the name of the substituent that is 5 hydroxy then the double bond 2 heptene without e and then you mention the position of the ketone 4 on or you can write it as 5 hydroxy hept there are 7 carbons and then 2 in without e again and 4 on if you have more than one ketone functional groups present uh, in the molecule, then you add another prefix di, tri, or tetra before O and E. So if you have two ketone functional groups, then it's a di on. If you have three ketone functional groups, it, it is a tri on, tetra on, and so on. But when you have more than one ketone functional groups and you add this prefix di, tri or tetra before on then you don't need to remove or replace the last e with o and e then you write full name of the alkane 
alkene or alkyne that is only in cases where you have more than one ketone functional group so let's see an example here so you have this molecule which has one two three four five six and seven carbon atoms now we have two ketone functional groups and a hydroxyl group as a substituent so it's a seven carbon chain it's a heptane with two uh, ketone function groups so it's a heptane dione and now we don't need to remove the last e of the heptane so we write full heptane and then dione but you have to mention the positions of both the ketone function group first you have to mention the position of the substituent and then uh, finally the parent name for numbering you have to uh, keep in mind the position of both the ketone function group so from left hand side there are two and four the closest so you start numbering from the left hand side and that is uh, then the hydroxyl group is at five so it's a five hydroxy heptane you see it's written in full with e and then at two and four you have the two ketone function group so we add the prefix di and end the name with o and e or you can write it in this form 5 hydroxy 2 4 heptane again full heptane with e and then di on this is the last example and i have uh, added uh, a few more functional groups so you have a carbon chain with a double bond a, a double bond here a triple bond a ketone functional group and a hydroxyl functional group as a substituent now we have one two three four different functional groups and the priority order say that ketone has the highest priority so this will be the parent functional group and the name will end with o and e because ketone is the parent functional group so for numbering first you have to uh, see the position of the ketone so from left hand side it is at one two three four and five from right hand side one two three four and five so from both hands the ketone function group is at five if it has similar position for both ends then you see the position of the double or the triple bond so in this case we have both double and triple bonds so it doesn't matter uh, if you have double or triple bonds or both uh, you have to start numbering from that end from where uh, either of the two the double or the triple bond comes first so if you start from here the double bond is at three but if you start from here the triple bond is at one so in this case both have similar priorities and you start from here if uh, uh, you start from here then the, uh, the triple bond is at one ketone is at five the double bond is at six and the hydroxyl group is at Four. So first you mention the position and the name of the substituent that is four hydroxy there are nine carbons in the chain so the pre, uh, the, the name known it's a noni nine on right so known then we have a double bond at position six so six e you see without e and at position one we have the triple bond so we write y n for the triple bond along with its position no e again and then you end the name with O and E and mention the position of the ketone function group as well. So this is how you can uh, name multifunctional molecules. So you have to keep in mind the priority order and then you can name them accordingly. Thank you so, for, so, so much for watching and uh, I'll see you later with a nomenclature of another functional group in my next video. So stay tuned.